प्रेजेंटेशन बाद में लगाएंगे उसके बाद स्टार्ट Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Madhya Farhan and I welcome you all on behalf of Department of Dermatology, Fazaya Ruth Paul Medical College to the seventh CPC Dermatology and the first ever CPC Dermatology from the platform of Fazaya Ruth Paul Medical College. We'll start the session with the name of Almighty Allah. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad Sadaqallahu al-Azim Before moving on to the session I would like to welcome our principal Fazaya Rukhaw Medical College, Professor Masood Ahmed Sheikh, for the opening address. Professor Masood Ahmed Sheikh. Hello, do you hear me? Hello. Aapko awaaz aa rahi hai? Say you audible, yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Maida, for inviting in this uh, CPC of the dermatology, the first ever uh, CPC uh, by collaboration of the Fazaya Rutho Medical College and Brooks Pharma and the Department of Dermatology. Uh, I congratulate uh, Dr. Humaira, who is our head of department and uh, Mr. Yasser of the Brooks Pharma for extending their help and the Pakistan Association of Dermatologists for organizing this event or, or I should say for letting the Fazaya Rutho Medical College to hold this event at Fazaya Rutho Medical College and contribute in the progression and in the propagation of the knowledge and information and update regarding the uh, field of the dermatology. Uh, I hope the, the viewers who have joined on online uh, through Zoom, they will get benefit through this arrangement. The speakers who will be talking today, they will be uh, able to you know, update information regarding the dermatology. And, the, and this update will definitely bring some improvement in the patient care and you know, the update the participants, especially the professionals the young professionals who have joined this Association of Dermatology uh, in their knowledge and the help in filling the gaps in their knowledge. So once again, I congratulate the Brooks Pharma. Brooks Pharma has done excellent job recently, especially Mr. Yasser has, uh, you know, uh, just changed the, the pace of, you know, the contribution of the, uh, the pharmaceutical industry in the in the uh, organizing the events of uh, like conferences and seminars where which gives a chance of uh, to the professionals to sit together and to work together. 
So I congratulate Brooks Parma. I congratulate Pakistan Association of the Dermatology. Uh, who have, who are continuously working towards you know the betterment and uh, towards the upgrading uh, the information and uh, contributing in organizing such events for the propagation of the knowledge and for the for the <clears throat> updating the young physicians especially uh, who are working in the field. So thank you, Ma, Dr. Madhya uh, Farhan, for inviting me for this you know, opening remarks, and I would request you to please continue with your program. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now we'll proceed with our session. And I'm going to present my first case. Questions will be taken out in every case. Uh, you can uh, jot down your questions in the chat box and your queries will be answered, inshallah. So, our first case is an 11 year old school girl who is a resident of Mali and she presented to our clinics with a slowly growing, non healing, painless plaque on the right side of the neck for the last eight months. And uh, she presented to us with her mother who explained that this actually is started with a small raised bump on the right side of the neck around eight months back. And eventually it ruptured to form a large crusted lesion, which was oozing and uh, very uh, spreading uh, from all sides of the all aspects. And then it was treated. It was treated. They took her to several doctors and previous uh, past, uh, many treatments were given. And uh, the treatments when we were, we asked them, it totally comprised of topical and systemic antibiotics. She had multiple courses of topical and systemic antibiotics, which resulted in only partial clearance of the lesion. Um, she failed to reproduce most of the prescriptions, and but uh, she said that most of them comprised of the antibiotics. So suddenly what happened that after around eight months, the lesion suddenly started spreading circumferentially and uh, and then it urged them to uh, bring the patient to us. Now, the systemic review did not reveal anything remarkable. Her past history, besides the eight-month history, it was not significant. Family history was also not significant. Drug history, as I've already mentioned, only comprised of antibiotics, antiseptics, uh, and antihistamines on some, some instances. Then there was a history of travel to Multan one year back. When we did a cutaneous examination, there was a large plaque of around 12 by 12 centimeter, which is pretty large, and it was covered with thick black crusts when, with oozing and impetitionization. And the waters were raised, small red papules and pustules. And there was a predatory form ulcer in the center of the lesion. So this was when she was brought to us. Uh, this was the initial picture. You can see, you can well appreciate that there are the raised borders. And in the center, the whole lesion has, uh, is oozing with purulent discharge and metagenization. So we based our differential diagnosis on its first appearance, because when it presented to us, it was all metagenized and covered with pus. Our first differential had to be in Pitaigo. And then lupus vulgaris, which seemed to be super infected, cutaneous leishmaniasis, and squamous cell carcinoma. Now, in the Taiko was already uh, kind of ruled out because she had already taken uh, several different kinds of uh, antibiotics of different groups. So, when it failed to respond to any of them, the first differential was already ruled out. Then uh, we also, squamous cell carcinoma was also unlikely, but on the uh, on the basis of appearance, we put it in. So the main differentials were either lupus vulgaris or cutaneous lesionitis. So without wasting any further uh, time, we went, we planned a skin biopsy for her. 
On examination, systemic examination only revealed cervical lymphadenopathy, and uh, the routine investigations, the baseline investigations, all were normal. Now, when we did her skin biopsy, histopathology revealed dense chronic inflammation with two epithelioid cells and numerous LT bodies or amastigotes, which is seen engulfed by histiocytes. So it was pretty obvious uh, by the biopsy report that uh, the diagnosis was cutaneous lesioniasis. So our uh, one of our differentials is finally confirmed. So we began our treatment with injection glucantine, megalamine antiminate, uh, 20 milligram per kg per day, intramuscular for four weeks. This seems to be a very simple case, as you can see, a clear cut case of cutaneous leishmaniasis when it was biopsy proven. We started with uh, megalamine antiminate. And uh, the story seemed to be end here, uh, to end here, but it wo it had not. It didn't end here. And uh, there is another angle to the story. The patient, she left for Multan. Apparently she, apparently, she couldn't get the injections over here. So she said that she would go to Multan to get the injections. And then we didn't see her for the next six months. Now, when she presented again after six months, she presented in a state like this. The plaque had grown even larger in size. It was totally crusted. Then in petrogenization, the oozing or the wet part had somewhat resolved, but the plaque was still there. The ulcer was still there. The borders were still active and raised, and they were circumferentially spreading. She was immediately placed on glucantine, that is meglomine antimonate. So you can see that These are the serial photographs we took uh, while the uh, glucan time course was going on. And you can see that uh, the lesion started resolving. The crater started healing. The ulcer, the borders, somewhat, they became depressed. And uh, overall, the lesion improved. But after three months of commencement of the treatment, some active borders, they still persisted. You can see, you can appreciate that after say three months, there are certain active borders and uh, they were still there. So we did cryotherapy. Cryotherapy is, uh, as you know, done by liquid nitrogen. And we did cryotherapy along the edges to stop the activity and which uh, was successful. So the borders also, after some time, they showed improvement. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it was not a very difficult case. It was not something to uh, uh, discuss actually with the such senior uh, dermatologists. But there were certain points that I would have, I would like to discuss on this platform, uh, which are which. Uh, urged me to present this case in front of such uh, senior uh, faculty members. My first point is, why wasn't the patient advised skin biopsy during the first eight months of her illness? Because during the course of her illness of the past eight months, when she first presented to me, she had visited numerous dermatologists and she was only prescribed with topical and systemic antibiotics. Now, if one antibiotic didn't work and second didn't work and third didn't work, why didn't anyone think of any other differential? And why wasn't skin biopsy planned? So this is my first point. Second point is, why didn't she get the injections after biopsy, uh, which uh, we had already prescribed the whole course, and she got lost to follow up. And when she presented after six months, even then, uh, not even a single injection had been given to her. So the when we uh, dug the history from her and we uh, persuaded her to give us the whole history, there was a, a poem, she told us something very strange, which answers my third point. That is, was there any violation of code of medical ethics during the course of her disease? When she went to Multan, she was enrolled into a research study, according to the mother, without her consent. And uh, we are not known about the study. We don't know 
what medicines were given, what trials were done. But for the six months, she was enrolled into a study with some new drug, which was given to her without any resolution of her symptoms or her disease. And she was continued with that treatment. And in the end, she was told that in the end, she got to know that she was a part of that study. So that is a very uh, uh, alarming point or a very, very alarming uh, uh, situation, uh, which uh, is uh, something that should be addressed over such platforms and we discuss simple or complex cases. So the purpose of uh, this CPC dermatology is not only to create, present cases and to create awareness, but it is also to address such unethical practices going on in our country and worldwide. And they had to be, the measures should be taken in order to, you know, uh, so we should discuss these things and we should take some action against us. So the discussion is, you all know, cutaneous vaccinosis, it is a protozoan born disease and it is the second largest parasitic killer in the world after malaria. And uh, it is respond, is it transmitted by bite of sand fly species phlebotomus. It is classified into cutaneous, mucocutaneous, visceral, and post Salazar dermal leishmaniasis. And these are the major species which are involved here. In Pakistan, it is endemic almost all over. Now, in Balochistan and Sindh, the uh, anthropogenic and zoonotic variants both persist. Whereas in Punjab and uh, KPK, uh, anthropogenic venous leishmaniasis, that is the human vector human uh, variant, that is uh, prevalent. So now Lishmanis is all over Pakistan, almost. These are the wet types, and this is the dry type. Now, diagnostic criteria is history of exposure to an endemic area, which in her case was Multan, history of sandfly, which she did not kill, history of high risk activities such as sleeping outdoors, and a non healing chronic nodular ulcer, which in her case, was present there for the last eight months. Demonstration of amastic goats in the stain smear, demonstration saw of amastic goats in the biopsy, which was in her case, presence of leishmanial granules or PCR of leishmanial DNA. Other in the investigations we perform are the skin smear, skin biopsy, culture, leishmania skin test, and PCR, which is the gold standard. Treatment is sodium steboglucanate and megalamine antiminate, which is the treatment of choice, which we still follow once daily IV or IM injection antimony, 20 milligram per kg per day for up to two weeks, depending on the severity of lesion. And other drugs are fluconazole, 200 mg per day orally for six weeks, miltiposin, which is a comparatively newer drug, 50 milligram twice day orally for three weeks. Colchicine and itraconazole can also be given. We can also inject this antimony, megalamine antimonate, intralesionally into the lesion. Cryotherapy, as we did in our case, it is also useful in small lesions, but in this case, we did it on the borders, which was quite successful. And it can also be treated by local excision, curatage, or electrodesiccation, but it is associated with relapse. Surgical excision is not recommended as there is high risk of relapse and the cosmetic disfigurement. So, if there are any questions, you can put them down in the chat box. And I would like to welcome my professor, Professor Mara Mariam, to give the closing statement of the case or the conclusion of the case. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Nadiha. Um, the point of uh, presenting these, uh, this case on this platform is actually, uh, it, is, it was a, a simple case and uh, everyone can uh, go for the treatment. But the point is, uh, whenever we uh, find any case of non-healing ulcer, nodule, or even a plaque, just like this one, for more than six weeks. 
why we don't go for a biopsy we should make it a habit not in all cases but this is the most important tool of diagnosis in the field of dermatology aur logon ke paas aur bahut sare tools hote hain jisse wo diagnosis ya clues nikal lete hain magar hamare yahan abhi tak ye trend nahi hai are actually making in this investigated uh, especially as far as the biopsy immunofluorescence ko bahut aage वो हमारे यहाँ बहुत ज्यादा होती भी नहीं है लेकिन बायोप्सी इन सर्टन सेंटर्स बायोप्सी इज डन द रीजनेबल प्राइस सो व्हाई डोंट वी गो फॉर बायोप्सी इन सच केसेस बिकॉज़ दिस इज नॉट द ओनली केस आई हैव बेन थ्रू मेनी केसेस विद दे वर ट्रीटेड एज राइसेस बट लेटर ऑन दे कैन बी द नहीं आने दिया आवाज दे टर्न ऑन टू बी they turned out to be uh, the uh, uh, cases of uh, fungal infections initially they were treated for psoriasis or eczema but later on they were actually the fungal infection so we should go for biopsy if our patient is not uh, giving any response for the conventional therapy number 2 this patient didn't know what she was uh, given in the multan and uh, but she was for sure that there was no injections uh, intramuscular or intralesional over there she went there because she heard that this type of uh, uh, disease is prevalent in multan so, so she went there because uh, glucan time injection was not available in karachi uh, at that time they didn't uh, tell her what they are going to give her but they started her on any therapy after 6 months when she came back to us she had very worse condition we don't have a right to give such ugly uh, disfiguring scars to our patient so we have to be very ethical regarding that thing and uh, um, number 3 is uh, to treat this patient with other modalities also at the end of treatment when i found that the borders were not convincing uh, uh, with the clear of disease i would like to say thank to dr shamuna tirmizi because i sent her uh, for cryotherapy to her she did her uh, cryotherapy with borders um, of the lesion to treat the borders and uh, beside that one more thing i would like to uh, thank to her Yeah, she started her on uh, multipostin, but she uh, the patient developed some uh, side effects of that, so we had to stop uh, stop it uh, over there. So thank you so much, Dr. Shamuna. We have to discuss things with each other in the field uh, of uh, dermatology, and also we can take uh, help from each other um, uh, for the betterment of our patients. So uh, thank you very much from my side. If you have any questions, we can uh, answer it uh, um, in uh, right now. Um, uh, Dr. Madiha is going to answer the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Did you? Did you? So we'll begin with the next case. So our second case is of a thirty-five-year-old married male. who was a security guard by profession and he was a resident of Hawkesbury and he presented to our clinic with multiple painful and itchy blisters and erosions on the groin area for the last one month now his history of presenting complaint was that he did not have any previously known comorbidities and the painful blisters which we saw were they uh, just uh, appeared around one month back They ruptured to form erosions, and within 24 hours, and then new blisters developed. He had been using topical antibiotics again in this case. Only antibiotics were was were given to this, and only topical antibiotics, no systemic therapy, and there was no response. 
His past history and the drug history was not significant. Systemic review did not reveal anything significant at that time when he first presented. Cutaneous examination revealed multiple flaccid blisters and hemorrhagic erosions present on malatral inguinal regions. And Mikulski sign was positive. Mucosal surfaces at that time were normal. So this, these were the initial lesions, actual lesions of the patient when he first presented to our clinic. And you can appreciate the multiple small erosions on the groin area and in the surrounding area as well. Initially, they were small flaccid blisters, but they ruptured within 24 hours to, to keep, uh, develop into these erosions. The systemic examination was unremarkable and the patient was vitally stable. His baseline investiga investigations were done and blood CP, you see LFTs, all hepatitis profile, the x-rays, they were all normal. Skin biopsy was sent for histopathology and direct immunofluorescence, which confirmed our clinical diagnosis of pemphigus vulgaris. Histopathology was showed classical intraepidermal blister with e cancellitic cells, whereas direct immunofluorescence showed supravasal deposition of IgG and autoantibodies. Now, uh, unfortunately, we were unable to get the hold of those slides, but I will be sharing the biopsy report. It was done from SIUT, uh, both the histopath and the direct immunofluorescence. Yeah. So after thorough examination and detailed preliminary investigations, we placed him on oral prednisolone, which you know is the first line of treatment for cervical skull guys, and then is a Uh After we prescribed the, uh, these medications to the patient, the patient left and he got lost to follow. He did not show up for more than three to four months. Now, more than three months later, when he returned, he returned with severe generalized cutaneous disease, severe oral mucosal involvement, difficulty in chewing and swallowing resulting in weight loss, and swelling on right lower face. So we had to admit the patient to our dermatology ward immediately. On examination, the patient looked irritable with sunken eyes, looking much thinner, emaciated than before. Generalized erosions with few placid blisters, they were present all over the trunk and limb. There were erosions and whitish crusts on the lips, the whole lips they were involved. And he had difficulty in opening the mouth. Uh, his, both of the lips and the uh, angles were full of erosions. And there was a tender submandibular swelling on the right side. Oral cavity examination revealed a large five by three centimeter erosion on right buccal mucosa and diffuse white curly membranes with multiple small erosions all over. So you can see, this is the cutaneous uh, examination picture. You can see his body is full of flaccid blisters, full of hemorrhagic erosions, and the whole disease has now become generalized, which was initially only confined to the groin. There were two types of lesions, as I earlier mentioned. One was a large, non-healing, ulcerated, ulcerating type of lesion, ulcerative type lesion on the right buccal mucosa, which you can appreciate near the molars, upper molar, right upper molar. And rest of the whole oral cavity was filled with this curdy white membranes. Now, patient, according to him, he had been taking this prednisolone and as a therapy, unmonitored and unsupervised by himself when he was presented again this second time to us. So all the baseline labs, they were done again. Now the blood CP, UC, LFT, urinary, x-rays, hepatitis from all was again normal. Treatment continued, so we had to continue the treatment again with tablet delta, delta portal, 80 milligram per day, and tablet immunon, which is as a therapy, 15 milligram twice daily. Meanwhile, we saw that his thrush, thrush the candidiasis, the whitish curdy membranes involving his whole, uh, whole mouth, oral cavity, and the lips, it was progressively worsening. And it was not responding to local antifungals because initially we only gave him local antifungals. So we decided to start high dose oral antifungals because uh, we, we couldn't stop, we could, we could not hold this tablet, delta bottle, and neuron at that time. So we planned that we should go with high dose oral antifungals. 
So again, his liver profile was sent uh, and uh, liver enzymes, they came out to be really deranged. ALT was 117. And so we sent his hepatitis profile again and hepatitis B surface antigen at that time, it was reactive. And then we went for the hepatitis B virus PCR and which came out to be positive. So at that time, there were two challenges which we had to face. We had to treat his severe mucocutaneous disease because now his pampigus not only involved in skin, it also involved the mucosa. So we had to treat the severe mucocutaneous disease in the presence of active hepatitis B virus infection. And then the second challenge was treatment of oral disease in the presence of severe mucosal candidiasis because now his oral cavity had two types of lesions, pampigus and candidiasis. So we had to adopt a multidisciplinary approach in order to proceed further and we had to involve the following specialities, ENT uh, for the submandibular swelling, maxillofacial surgeon, gastroenterologist, and medical specialist. Oral mucosal biopsy was done by maxillofacial surgeon because we were of the opinion, like we were of the opinion that it might be the, the swelling on the right buccal mucosa, the ulcer on the right buccal mucosa, it can be a part of the candidiasis as well. But it turned out that it was uh, it was an er erosion of amphibious vulgaris. Ultrasound abdomen done by gastroenterologist showed unremarkable study. So he went for fibro scan of the liver to see the uh, status of the liver, which showed grade uh, F0 to F1 fibrosis. So the liver was pretty healthy at that time. Fiber optic diet language will be done by ENT showed no other findings except extension of that thrush down to the pharynx. So now the treatment was oral tenophobia, which was started by um, our uh, um, head of the department of gastroenterology department, uh, Dr. Kamran, and along with Dr. Basit of FRPMC. And uh, they began this treatment because they, uh, they were totally involved uh, with us during the course of this uh, his illness. Delta Cortal and Numeron, they continued because uh, um, the gastroenterologists were of the opinion that uh, because they went for the Delta antigen and the Delta antigen of hepatitis B came out to be negative, so they said that it, this should not be stopped. It can go on along with the oral tenophobia. Capsule fluconazole, 150 milligram once weekly, and fluconazole, 50 milligram once daily was started for the fungal infection. Topical steroids were given for the vampiris lesions and oral mucosal gel and the statin drops were given for the oral candidiasis. Slowly and gradually his condition improved. Patient remained admitted for around four months in our ward. Pampigus lesions, they responded well to the therapy except the oral ulcer, which healed just before discharge. And uh, oral candidiasis also took three months to resolve with resultant improvement in oral intake and his overall improvement in his health and well being and his weight. Now, when he was discharged, there was complete remission of mucocutaneous disease. The steroids were being tapered at that time. They were not, he was not on steroids, but they were being tapered. Complete resolution of candidiasis. Liver status was same as initially, that is the liver was still healthy. And now he was advised regular gastroenterology follow-ups along with regular dermatology follow-ups. Now, now he is on regular monthly follow-up. Uh, Alhamdulillah, he's off steroids and he's still in remission. And it has been more than a year now. So in the end, I will conclude this case again. It is a very simple case according to the, keeping in mind the dermatology because um, pampigus vulgaris is a disease frequently seen by us. It's a very common autoimmune blistering disorder. It presents to us. Uh, it, and he, he presented with a very classical presentation of pampigus. Um, even before doing the biopsy, we knew the diagnosis. And uh, But my point of presenting it here was that multidisciplinary approach should be adopted because in this case, the patient, we developed, suddenly developed hepatitis B. And had we not been monitoring him and, and uh, had we not 
have been not involved the gastroenterologist and the maxillofacial and the ENT specialist and the medical specialist on board with us. Um, he he could have gone into liver failure. And uh, next point is um, the other point is that we should not give, hesitate to give immunosuppressants because even when I when we discussed it with the gastroenterologist and medical specialist, they were of the opinion and they were on board with us on this matter uh, in this uh, on this point that while we are treating a patient in a tertiary care hospital uh, we have all the facilities over there we have all kinds of investigations there we have all kinds of specialists present over there so we should not hesitate the patient hesitate to give the patient the maximum treatment the aggressive treatment in order to uh, induce uh, remission in that flare of that disease because he presented to us with a flare of pathogens so uh, these were the two points which uh, were in my mind while presenting this case. And I would like to, because research has been going on, and uh, there are many articles worldwide uh, which uh, have shown that uh, while the patient is on immunosuppressants, especially injection with Zimab, which is very uh, popular nowadays in practice of guys treatment, uh, which is a biologic. So during that immunosuppressant and biologic therapy, there are many patients who go into reactivation of hepatitis B, I said even uh, uh, reactivation of uh, the, uh, many other uh, di uh, diseases. So um, there's an article I'm uh, going to mention here uh, in which uh, they, they, did, they did a study and uh, they concluded it. They, uh, the concluding point of this article was that. Uh, Hepatitis B antigen positive patients, uh, if, even if they're, if we are treating a patient of pancreas with immunosuppressants or biologics, or even if not biologics, simple immunosuppressants like azathioprine or methotrexate, we should always go for serial uh, liver profile and hepatitis profile. Uh, because there have been cases reported of activation of hepatitis B with, uh, on, uh, in patients or on immunosuppressants. In Pantagus. So, again, I would like to call Professor Mara Miriam to give a concluding discussion. Thank you very much, Madhya. Thank you very much, Madhya. I would like to read this, uh, this part of the article. Uh, basically, it was the article regarding hepatitis B positive patient with on immunosuppressive therapy. Due to any reason, uh, this is uh, actually the study of uh, hematological malignancy. So they say that hepatitis B surface antigen positive patient should be referred to a viral hepatitis specialist for assessment if the treating clinician is unsure of uh, the appropriate management for the patient who is hepatitis uh, positive. They should consult a viral hepatitis specialist guidelines. Positive uh, uh, hepatitis B surface, uh, surface antigen indicates a diagnosis of chronic hepatitis B infection. Due to the complex nature of uh, chronic hepatitis B infection during immunosuppression especially, we recommend that all hepatitis B surface antigen positive patients are referred to viral hepatitis specialist. Assessment follows existing guidelines for the assessment management of the patient with chronic hepatitis B and the serial of uh, the surface antigen repetition and anti-HBE antibody and its DNA, LFTs, uh, other uh, blood-borne uh, virus serology like uh, hepatitis A, C, D, and HIV also, the, and uh, potential complications of chronic hepatitis B, such as liver cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinomas. So they also say that a positive patient do not, uh, uh, generally the hepatitis B positive patient do not uh, routinely need to be referred to viral hepatitis, but especially when they are uh, put on immunosuppressive therapy, we should consult uh, the uh, concerned department. So it is very important for us, especially because the majority of our um, um, problems are immuno, immunologically mediated, especially in dermatology, like PAM figures, SLE, and all these. Um, we have to discuss such things. If we uh, find any infection, we have to discuss with the infectious disease patient. And this is the competency of a consultant. 
just like dr kamran i must uh, thank to dr kamran they said you go ahead with your treatment we are here to uh, deal with the our part of the and he started uh, the patient on antiviral therapy we started and continued our patient on immunosuppressive therapy and alhamdulillah our patient is in remission for the last one year one year he is on uh, in remission uh, without um, corticosteroid because uh, and uh, as a therapy i saw a patient he was taking a uh, um, steroid 5 mg once daily for last two years and he was a patient of uh, bullous pemphigoid all dermatologists know that bullous pemphigoid is much easier to treat than pemphigus vulgaris but he was taking this drug without any uh, logical reason behind it and some dermatologist or someone uh, gave him on uh, this when he presented to me he was uh, trembling he had very fragile skin multiple bruises and he was 60 plus patient age we tapered him uh, his uh, treatment now alhamdulillah he is much better his all the co uh, morbidities that developed due to um, uh, corticosteroids uh, were all uh, improved and now he is off the treatment um, for uh, immunosuppression so we should take a multidisciplinary approach in every aspect of uh, medicine and allied especially in dermatology because we deal with immuno immunological immuno mediated uh, immunologically mediated diseases we have to um, consult with our uh, con uh, counterparts or consultants regarding any so this was the uh, take home message to consult other uh, discipl uh, disciplinary uh, fields to treat your patient because the patient is the priority thank you very much and now uh, we will ask answer the questions if any questions are there dr medhia will uh, respond to question ji dr dr sana you asked for the uh, present the slide the treatment slides i'll show you i'll show you the treatment slide again So you asked for the treatment slide in this patient. We were giving, as I said previously, told oral tenofovirate. It's an antiviral uh, given by uh, gastroenterologist. Delta Cortel, eighty milligram. We started from eighty milligram uh, per, uh, per day, and then Imuron, fifty uh, milligram twice daily. Then intralesional uh, Kenacort, Trimsurolone was given into the buccal pemphigus ulceration, and it really helped a lot. because we were not applying any topical steroid into the oral cavity uh, uh, due to the fact that he was on antifungals and uh, any topical other antifungal um, steroid would flare the oral thrush so uh, this is the treatment slide which you asked for and i can uh, maybe asked for the pictures i can show you the pictures again i can show you the because uh, i think this was presented in a bitari this is a serial photograph of the lishmania case again i'll who joined late i want to show the pictures of this case again the initial presentation then lost to follow up then again represented with these lesions and then on glucan time treatment and then cryotherapy and after cryotherapy so these are the serial photographs the imiron dose imiron dose dr sana is imiron dose is i told you 50 mg twice daily He was on as a thiamine, fifty mg twice daily. So, if there are no more questions, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, 
दिस इज एन ऑटो इम्यून डिजीज सो फंगल इंफेक्शन इज सुपर इम्पोज ऑन दैट और दैट वॉज अ सेपरेट एंटिटी Uh, fungal infection is a common presentation of uh, patients who are on immunosuppressive therapy so we have to go uh, together with the antifungal therapy most uh, mostly mostly it happened that in uh, long term therapy of uh, this uh, type of uh, diseases we do have uh, uh, encounter with the fungal infection especially oral as well as in case of females genital fungal infection can occur in such patients so this is Uh, the thing that we uh, always uh, keep ourselves ready for the, the treatment of these diseases and the second thing was uh, there are two things one thing is that hepatitis b has two uh, type of uh, presentations one is acute and the other one is chronic sometimes acute can uh, disappear after some time uh, some weeks and then due to uh, this um, condition maybe they reappear but this patient had no any region so he may have developed during the course of uh, loss to follow up uh, uh, this, uh, this condition so uh, we have to go for the concomitant therapy of antivirals like okay. this no no they, uh, actually uh the and uh, the lesions skin lesions are the pure lesions of skin disease the pemphigus vulgaris blisters oral lesions were no initially the oral lesions were uh, the lesions of pemphigus vulgaris because the biopsy proved the biopsy proved the non healing ulcer that was present uh, on the uh, buccal mucosa was uh, the lesion of pemphigus vulgaris and it improved with the intralesional triamcin alone Mm, it was the uh, uh, the actual disease it was the actual disease the pemphigus vulgaris and because we, we were not able to uh, give him uh, oral uh, topical corticosteroids because of the candidiasis so we put him on the intralesional triamcin alone and that was the reason that we involved the maxillofacial surgeon uh from uh, cmh uh of the uh, brigadier saab because that was the reason because he is a expert of his day and he was the one who gave the intralesional trimcin alone to the patient he was the one who went for biopsy so he was also a part of our multidisciplinary team and during this case and i would also like to thank our assistant professor dr javed the same because he was he was the one who initially diagnosed this patient uh, of pemphigus sir and uh, we proceeded with the case side effect one and the other this is a case which is really interesting appears interesting to me because it is very difficult to treat patients with uh, hepatitis b infection along with uh, pcr positive with viremia and of course the fibros can shows 0 to 1 so that's good point but it's very difficult and it's double edged sword which can do anything so it was really very much challenging to treat this patient uh, with treatment with steroids 80 mg with viremia viral pcr positive so you have to have a big hand for this treatment challenging treatment for both departments dermatology as well as gastroenterology because it's not easy way to treat these patients now yeah. ma'am now he is on regular he, now he is on regular dermatology as well as gastroenterology follow ups and uh, alhamdulillah his liver status is still the same and uh, this as ma'am uh, earlier pointed out uh, dr omera that this was a really big challenge for us but we did not hesitate due to this strategy of putting a multidisciplinary approach and involving any everyone from our tertiary care hospital and uh, ad addressing all the issues simultaneously Yes. 
because you have to counsel him that this is the duration of your treatment and you have to take it. Now, was he transferred to the uh, ma'am, actually, uh, he was, a, as I told you earlier, he is a security guard by, by profession. And uh, he basically belongs to some area in Punjab. He's not a, a permanent resident over here. His job has, uh, you know, it, due to his job, he's residing here in Hawke's Bay. He, even his family he was not here. He is living as a single over here. So when we gave him the treatment, he was in a very bad shape. Uh, earlier, he is, his disease was not that, uh, I told you earlier that his disease only involved the groin. So what he did, which he later told us, that he took the treatment and then it went to his village. Because most of the people who come from other areas, other cities, when they get sick and when they are not well, they prefer to leave their job and take some leave and they prefer to go back to their uh, hometowns or villages. So that's what he did. But what he did wrong was that he took a bulk of Delta Cortel and Imuron with him and he just took them off and on. And due to that, the, his pemphigus also did not went into remission and he developed all the superimposed infections like the, the candidiasis and thrush due to that unsupervised and unmonitored uh, intake of uh, prednisolone and uh, the immunosuppressant. So that is the main reason. Thank you. Is there any other question on the Zoom uh, members? Um, or any comments from our yeah. Doc appreciating the Dr. Humaira, Dr. Sadia is I think not uh, here for her uh, commitments. I would like to thank Dr. Humaira, Dr. Sadia Tabassum uh, from Aha Khan and Civil Hospital and uh, Pakistan Association of uh, Dermatologists. Thank you very much, as well as the CPC dermatology team for giving us this opportunity to uh, present such challenging cases over here. And um, I would like to say thanks to um, Dr. Shamuna for her help and support. And I would like to uh, thank uh, to, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Kamran, the gastroenterologist, who supported us in this uh, uh, challenging case for us. So always, I, I just want to say one thing that all my juniors, please, whenever you see any patient, any patient who is not responding to conventional therapy, go for biopsy because there are certain centers who uh, do the biopsy at reasonable rates and prices. So always go for biopsy because our patients are really suffering a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank Brooks Pharma who uh, who support without whose support we were not able to uh, continue this thing although there were challenges for them to pass the gate uh, especially in our setup but they uh, anyhow they uh, make it uh, possible thank you very much um, all who supported us and uh, the, the audience also who supported us and asked questions very, very reasonable. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Omara. Th thank yeah. you, everyone, for the wonderful comments. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shamuna, Dr. Izvan, Dr. Mariam, everyone who's, uh, who has commented. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much for listening to us. And uh, uh, thank you, everyone, the audience present over here in the lecture hall. Thank you so much. And uh, inshallah, we'll be doing more of these activities and sharing more of these uh, wonderful cases with you. Thank you.